Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. There are extreme parallels between these two readings this morning from Acts and John's Gospel. Both are leaving. Paul has spent considerable time in Ephesus and he's going to be leaving and Jesus is leaving. He's going back to the Father. This is the high priestly prayer. He prays just before he's arrested and his passion begins. You know, sometimes there are things that are left out in the daily readings that are important. Right, sister? Yes. So, listen how or to what St. Paul says in chapter 20 just prior to what we heard proclaimed, beginning with verse 25. But now I know that none of you whom I preach the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. Sound familiar? Jesus is leaving. And so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you. For I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. In other words, Paul says, I can wash my hands and know that when I leave, I gave you everything Christ gave me to give you. I withheld nothing. And so he says, keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, this is the presbyters he's speaking to now, the priests, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers and bishops, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant. And remember that for three years, night and day, 
I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you inheritance among all who are consecrated. How are we consecrated? In the truth. How do you know what the truth is? The Word of God. There are savage wolves that have come among the flock since Christ left and Paul left to pervert the truth. And so it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we be rooted in Scripture to be rooted in the faith because we are living in, in a time right now where there, there is a crisis of faith. In the fall, there's going to be a school that's going to be established downstairs the Seton, through the Seton Foundation. Private school. Private school. But they are going to be seeking the bishop's approval for Catholic identity. And one of the things that they recognize, that they want more than anything else, and what the parents want, a big meeting here last night, they want authentic Catholic teaching. Authentic Catholic teaching. That every subject that is taught is rooted in the faith. Rooted in the faith. Because of the culture that we are living in, they want their kids consecrated in the truth. And so it's going to be very important that the teachers themselves are well catechized and properly formed. You can't teach what you don't understand and you won't teach what you don't believe. It's important to be consecrated in the truth so that when the lies, half-truths, and deceptions come, we can root out all of that stuff because we're rooted in the scripture and consecrated in the truth.